Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Lux Winkels and welcome back to how to compose classical music for dummies and this is lesson 11 and today we are going to talk about 7th chords and on more popular progressions but not before we will revisit last week's topic as I always do so last week was all about chord functions we have tonic chords where the music is stable we have dominant chords where there is a lot of tension and we have predominant chords which is a bit in between a tonic chord is a chord where the music always wants to resolve to and one three and five the diatonic triads in a major scale are diet are tonic functions the two and four are predominant and the five and seventh are dominant functions and we talked about three common progressions I mean one more on three cadences when music ends with the one chord it means it is a perfect cadence when it ends with the six minor chord it is a it is a deceptive cadence because the music does resolve but not to the place you would expect and lastly we have the imperfect cadence where the music ends with a dominant function line and that creates a pause the music is not done yet and I would highly recommend you to watch lesson 10 first before you watch this lesson and in this lesson will be all about seventh chords so let's talk about that it is we can talk about new chords so what exactly is a seventh chord a seventh chord is where well, we not have just three notes but we add a fourth note we add the seventh note one three five and seven and in this lesson we will learn three seventh chords the major seventh the minor seventh and the dominant seventh and seventh chords are used a lot in jazz because more notes equals more jazz in jazz it is the standard that all the chords have at least four notes like seventh chords are the standard and you can make even more complex notes but this is composed classical music for dummies and in classical music we most of the time have just chords of three notes but i wanted to talk about major minor and dominant seventh as well because it is also important to know especially if you want to compose in jazz so let's first do the major seventh the c major seventh is c e g b because that is one three five and seven c major is c d e f g a b one three five and the seventh note and are these all in a major scale yes so c e g b is C major 7 let's now do G major 7 so G A B C D E F is 1 3 5 7 and now we need to check if it's all diatonic notes so let's see G major has one sharp which is F sharp so G major 7 will be G B D F sharp we use all the notes of the major scale it is actually the exact same as when we make a major chord when we make a major chord we pick one three and five and we check if the notes are in the major scale with major seven we just add the seventh note we just add one more note and we check if all the notes are in the major scale and if so we have created the major seven chord it actually is really easy so can you make F major 7? You can pause the video if you want to. So F major 7 will be F, G, A, B, C, D, E. And now we check if we need to add flats or sharps. So F major would have one flat, which is B flat. So F, A, C and E are all diatonic notes of the F major scale and so F A C E is F major 7 and one more D major 7 
Well, again, 1, 3, 5, 7, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, F, A, C. And now we check D major has two sharps, which is F sharp and C sharp. And we both have an F and a C, so D major 7 will be D, F sharp, A, C sharp. It's just the exact same as when we make a major chord, but we just add the seventh notes and we check also with the seventh note if it is in the major scale because the formula for us for the major seven is just one three five and seven so if we know major seven minor is just easy because it is one flat three five flat seven we make the major seven and we flatten the third and seventh note so from the last example D major 7 is D F sharp A C sharp. So D minor 7 will be D F A C. The F sharp is flattened to an F natural and the C sharp is flattened to a C natural. So with this in mind can you already construct the C minor 7th chord? 1 flat 3 5 flat 7. So C major will be C, E, G, B, because all these notes are in the C major scale. And now we flatten the third and seventh note. So C, E becomes E flat, G and B flat. So C, E flat, G and B flat. And that's it. There is one last chord which is the dominant seven chord it is one three five and flat seven so f7 and this seven symbol means it is a dominant seven so first major seven will be f a c e which means we flattened the seven notes to an e flat f a c e flat is the dominant seventh chord one three five and flat seven So let's do some exercises. Can you construct for me these four seven chords? G dominant seven, C minor seven, B flat major seven, and D dominant seven using circle fifths, which you really have to remember by now. And the formulas are down here. And I would like for you to pause the video and try it for yourself because Thinking for yourself is really important if you want to learn something new. So you got the answer? Well, let's see. First, G dominant 7. Again, the 7 means it is dominant 7. G dominant 7, 1, 3, 5, 7. G, A, B, C, D, E, F. G, B, D, F. And now we first make major 7. Let's check for flats and sharps. So G major has one sharp, which is F sharp. So G major will be G, B, D, F sharp. But we have a not major seven, we have a dominant seven, which means one, three, five, flat seven. So we need to flatten the seventh note. So yeah, the sharpened F sharp will be an F natural again. G dominant seven is G, B, D, F. The next chord is C minor 7. So C major 7 will be C, E, G, B. We flattened the third note, E becomes E flat, and we flattened the seventh note, B becomes B flat, and bam! C minor 7, C, E flat, G, B flat. That's, it's actually way too easy. B flat major 7. Well, B flat will be B, C, D, E, F, G. A, B flat, D, F, A, and now we check for sharps or flats. So B flat major has one, two sharp flats, I'm sorry, two flats, which is B flat and E flat. So, well, B flat, D, F, and A are four notes, all in the B flat major scale, so it already is B flat major seven. That's actually it. Do we, yeah, we have one last example. I don't think it's really that difficult, but we just do one example anyway. D dominant seventh. D 
D will be 1, 3, 5, 7 will be D, E, F, G, A, B, C. D, F, A, C is 1, 3, 5, and 7. Now we first make D major 7. So D major has 1, 2 sharps, which is F sharp and C sharp. So D, F sharp, A, C sharp is major 7th. And now we need to just flatten the 7th note because dominant is 1, 3, 5, flat 7. So the C sharp becomes C natural. D dominant 7th is D, F sharp, A, C. So how do we use 7th chords? In jazz a lot, but dominant 7th chord is also something we can see in classical music. The dominant 7th chord is really, really dissonant, really unstable, and it wants to resolve down a perfect 5th. In the previous lesson we talked about the perfect cadence, where the 5th chord wants to resolve to the 1 chord. If we make that 5th chord a dominant 7th chord, it wants to resolve even more. There is even more tension that wants to resolve back to that tonic chord, to the 1 chord, which we can hear in this example. Dominant 7 to 1. 5, 7 to 1 in Roman numeral analysis. So, we have talked a lot, we talked enough about the chords because those chords were just a bit, but a bit too easy. So, we have, I think we have time for some more ear training. We already know the 4, 5, 1 progression, which is a perfect cadence. 4, 5, 6 minor, which is also known to as the deceptive cadence because it resolves but not to the place you would expect. And we also have talked about the imperfect cadence where the music ends with a, the 5 chord, with a dominant chord. And so it creates a sense of pause. And we will add some more today. The fourth progression you will learn is the most pro important jazz progression. 2, 5, 1. From the 2 chord to the 5 chord to the 1 chord. And in jazz, you can see it always goes with circle of fifths. D, perfect fifth down, perfect fifth down. And in jazz, we usually use 7 chords. And it sounds like this. This is how a 2-5-1 progression sounds like, and I've added the 7th note, so 2 becomes, you will hear a 2 minor 7, 2 5 dominant 7, 2 1 major 7, but it sounds about the same. But you can, but for educational purposes, you can hear probably, because I added the 7 chords, that it sounds a lot more jazzy. Is, it really is the most important jazz progression. The fifth chord I want to talk about is from the 1, the 6 minor, back to 1. And it is actually from a tonic chord to another tonic chord because, as I have taught in the previous lesson, 1, 3, and 6 are tonic chords. So when you go from a tonic chord to another tonic chord and back to again a tonic chord, there is no tension that builds up and so for that reason it sounds really chilling, really chillish as you can hear in this example. The music is not really going anywhere and that's not something negative because well sometimes you just want to compose something really chilly and this progression suits that really nice. From going to a tonic chord to another tonic chord, there is no tension that's building up, no tension that wants to release, and therefore it just sounds really chill. With these two extra progressions, we will do some. We will do a test. Which progressions do you hear? And you can choose from the perfect cadence, five to one, the the deceptive cadence from five to six minor, the imperfect cadence when a piece of sentence ends with five. The 2 5 1 progression, really jazzy, and the 1 6 1, which sounds really chilly. So, 
would like for you to just grab pen and paper and number one to five and do this for yourself first. You will hear every progression three times. This is progression number one. So again, focus on does the music resolve and if so, is it a deceptive cadence or perfect cadence or maybe it is an imperfect cadence or if it's not both one of those, you can hear if it is the 2-5-1 progression which sounds a bit jazzy or if there is no tension whatsoever and it is just 1-6-1. One, one. Again, the first progression. You can hear it one last time. So now progression number two. So again, how does music resolve? And if it does not resolve in perfect cadence or if it's just really chilly from tonic to tonic, it will be 1-6-1. One, one. And if it does resolve, how does it resolve? 2-5-1 or in a classical way 4-5-1 or to a deceptive cadence? There are a lot of things to choose from. But I think this one is pretty easy. Now the third progression. That sounds a lot different from all the others. Some extra notes. I'm just giving it away, that's really stupid of me, but more notes equals more jazz, right? So what is the third progression? You can hear it one last time. I mean, I'm pretty sure you, everyone knows what the third is. But let's go to the fourth one. And I think I am now adding some more, some more instruments. So... What is this progression at the end? Does it resolve? I mean, if not, we already know it's an imperfect cadence. And if it does resolve, in what way does it resolve? You can hear to it a third and final time. And now the fifth and final progression of today, which is a bit more difficult. So if you don't got this, that, that, that's no problem. But I like to make things more difficult sometimes. can listen to this a second time and this one again it is it's way more difficult than just hearing the chords but it's an actual song form because in my opinion it is also important to recognize progressions if you listen to a actual composition We can listen to this a third and final time. Mm. 
are the chords. And now the chords will, 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 will repeat. So, how did you do? Let's see. The first one is... is 451 or also known as a perfect cadence the music resolves to the way you would expect it to go to the second one goes from 1 to 6 minor really chilly there is no built up tension 1 6 to 1 the third progression is 251 more notes equals more jazz. The fourth progression is the imperfect cadence. You can hear the music does not resolve. It just stops abrupt. Bum, bum. We want music. It's just a temporarily pause. The music wants to go something else. The fifth and final is a 2-5-1 progression. Two. Five, two, one, and again from two, five, one. There were a lot of extra notes added, it so it was a bit more difficult. But if you had all five correct, that would be pretty amazing. So here are the answers given: perfect cadence, one six one. 251 imperfect and 251 again and that was today's lesson we talked about seven chords make your seventh dominant minor seventh and dominant seventh and you have to remember the formulas to make them one three five seven above minor we flattened the third and seventh notes and dominant we only flattened the seventh notes and we talked more about popular progressions we added it 251 progression, the most, the most important jazz progression, hands down, and the 161 progression because it sounds really chill. And in the next lesson, we're going to learn the harmonic minor scale. We will le learn how to hear the difference between the two, and we also will learn two new intervals. So if you have any questions, please compose a comment and you can also let me know if you had all five correct or how much you had correct. And I would hopefully see you in lesson 12 on how to compose classical music for dummies.